Hello, Mr. President? Yes, sir. All the zombies have attained care. Oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> yes, sir. All the zombies have been dealt with. Sorry? From an next assignment, you would like me to teach the American public about demosaicing? I'll see what I can do, sir. Today we're going to talk about demosaicing, but let's rewind and talk about digital color images in general. Uh, digital color images are made up of three, we'll call them layers. We've got a red layer, a green layer, and a blue layer. These three layers are then combined and we get a color image. Now different cameras and camcorders have different ways of constructing these three layers. Some go for the three layers, three sensors option where each sensor captures a different layer then they're combined and other ones go for one sensor and color image. Now how do they go from one sensor to three layers? Um, they put what's called a color filter array over the detector and the color filter array assigns a single color to each pixel either red, green, or blue. So now we have one sensor and three channels although each channel is missing a significant number of pixels. Um, the way we fill in these pixels is by using demosaicing. Um, demosaicing takes the information we do have and calculates what the value should be in those missing spots. Um, there are many, many different types of demosaicing, but the one we're going to talk about today is called High Quality Linear Interpolation for Demosaicing of Bayer Pattern Color Images from a paper written by Henrique Malvar, Li Wei He, and Ross Cutler. As you can probably tell from the title, this method relies heavily on what's called linear interpolation. Uh, this linear interpolation is when you find the value of a blank pixel by averaging the four closest pixels. Um, while this basic method works, that's about all it does. Uh, it creates significant errors in the final image, including moiré patterns and zippering. The whole concept of this method is based on linear interpolation, but it seeks to improve it by acknowledging that we can move outside of just the immediately adjacent neighbors as well as use the information in all of the three color planes. So what this method does behind the scenes is use different equations to calculate the values at different locations. For example, to calculate the green value at a red location, one uses this equation where g sub b is just the plane linear interpolation we talked about before, and the delta sub r is the original red value minus the linearly interpolated red value which is found from the surrounding red values. Uh, this delta sub r is what is called the gradient and it just helps correct the bilinear interpolation. The exact same thing is done when you're calculating the green value at a blue location but obviously you use the blue pixels instead of the red ones to calculate this gradient. When you're looking at the equation used to calculate the red values at both the green and the blue pixels, you'll notice that the equations are essentially the same with just the gradient changing depending on what the base color is. So far we've kind of just ignored the Greek multipliers alpha, beta, and gamma, but these are what's known as gradient correction gains. The values were determined to be one half, five eighths, and three quarters using a Weiner approach. Then, using these values and the previously discussed equations, a set of filters can be generated. Just like the equations, these filters are location dependent, but when the proper filter is selected, all that needs to be done is a simple multiplication rather than the complex computation. After the filters are applied, you not so magically have your three color channels. Um, now that we've seen how this algorithm works, let's see how well it works. Can you tell which one is the truth image and which one went through the algorithm? Okay, yeah, you guessed it. The one on the right went through the algorithm. While there are some noticeable errors, overall it does quite a good job. From a normal viewing distance, most errors are unperceivable, and even when you get in close, the errors aren't that bad. The gradual color changes come out particularly well. The main errors can be seen around the edges of the image. When up close, there is perceivable zippering in both the horizontal and vertical directions, as well as some significant discoloration when the image has very high frequencies. This results from the fact that at this point, the lines in the image are about one pixel wide, and the filter is drawing information from a five pixel range. 
so it's understandable how some wrong information can get thrown in there. When the algorithm is applied to real-world images, the errors are even less noticeable. Slight zippering can be observed around the edges, and slight discoloration can be observed at high frequencies, but nothing on the magnitude of what was observed with the test pattern. The viewer will also notice that the overall color of the image seems to be off a little bit. This is due to the fact that the image has not undergone any color correction at this point, just demosaicing. So overall, this algorithm works quite well. Um, when the test image was compared to the truth image using a root mean square error analysis only on the edges, it was found to produce scores of 24.8 in the red channel, 14.1 in the green channel, and 27.3 in the blue channel. Nice job, algorithm.